Little known fact about Mr. Buggy D Clown, his superbly red nose was crafted from a very special substance, which is actually the subscribe button for this channel. And that means that if you were to say boop buggy on said nose, then you would be signing yourself up for regular One Piece content uploaded conveniently straight to your YouTube feed. So how's that for a deal? Fantastic content and an excuse to whack Buggy the Clown. Far too good to pass up, I would say. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and more specifically, welcome to another One Piece battle, where we take two characters from this vast series and pit them together in a hypothetical matchup, doing our best to determine a winner as objectively as possible by examining and awarding points for the following criteria. Power, speed, durability, haki, individual fighting style, devil fruits, intelligence, and other miscellaneous notes. And today I present to you a very special battle of godly figures, commencing with the one and only Captain Buggy, one of the OG villains of One Piece, who despite being defeated early on by Luffy, went on on to rise to the position of becoming a warlord of the sea after, well, let's say a very manufactured showing of his abilities at Marineford. Furthermore, Buggy was also a former member of the Roger Pirates under the direct command of the Pirate King himself, as well as a contemporary of current Emperor Redhead Shanks. So if nothing else, Buggy hails from the most impressive of pedigrees possible. And going up against the clown, we have the jester of the Straw Hats, God Usopp, a man who, despite his crippling cowardice, frequently rises to the occasion and surpasses all expectations. Usopp is also just a great pretty all rounder, a sort of Swiss army knife of miscellaneous skills that can be applied to combat or not. But here we will be applying them to combat, obviously. And of course, he is a treasured crewmate of the future Pirate King Monkey D. Luffy, so there is always going to be more to Usopp than meets the eye. But with that out of the way, let us commence the battle. And this time around, we are going to start with durability, which is arguably the weakest area for both combatants here today. However, at the same time, I feel like both of them are quite heavily underestimated in this area. Let's take Buggy, for example. He's a quintessential illustration of a character that you would expect to be wiped out with a couple of consecutive normal punches. However, his resilience is actually incredibly high, as shown on one particular occasion where he tanked his own Muggy Ball at point blank range, which I will remind you was powerful enough to inflict a decent amount of damage on Minotaurus, one of the Jailer Beasts of Impel down and an awakened Zoan fruit user. Although I guess I should point out the buggy survival in this case has more to do with his purpose in the series, which is generally comedy, which interestingly enough gives him a form of plot armor. Although not plot armor, I guess we'll call it comedy armor. And regardless of whether or not it makes any form of logical sense, that is just Buggy's existence in the series. He is not subject to the same laws that other regular characters are. And as for Usopp, there are also occasions where he produces his own comedy shield. However, we do also have some very tangible examples of just how much this guy can take, pre time skip no less, as during the Alabaster arc, he was smacked in the face by a four ton bat. After which he stood up like an absolute boss and then proceeded to defeat both of his opponents with the help of Chopper, of course. Furthermore, on Water 7, Usopp even proved himself capable of using an impact dial, a weapon which backfires on its user by design, meaning that it cannot be handled by anything less than a superbly durable and or driven individual. And comedy armor aside, I can't see an example of Buggy surpassing the Alabaster incarnation of Usopp in terms of durability, much less his post time skip form. So Usopp is going to take this opening category. Now moving on to Devil Fruits, because I think we should address this early on. And it isn't a very fair category to examine because obviously Usopp is not a Devil Fruit user, whilst Buggy certainly is. However, we do need to do it anyway, because the possession of a Devil Fruit adds a huge layer of versatility to any candidate. And there's nothing Usopp can really do to make up for this area. That isn't to say that he can't counter the Devil Fruit with other categories that we'll examine, such as equipping himself with a fantastic array of weapons. However, no matter what Usopp does, he can never attain that superhuman ability to add to his arsenal. So very simply, the category of Devil Fruit, rather predictably, has to go to Buggy. And next up is the ever important area of speed, which both contestants here will no doubt make heavy use of, since they are both very adept in the art of cowardice. In fact, when I imagine this fight, I expect it to play out very much like a game of tag, with at least one party constantly running away. And initially, you would think that the king of speed undoubtedly has to be Usopp. This guy's entire life is running, whether it be to warn his village about fake pirates coming to attack, or from a wide array of fights and otherwise intimidating situations. And we even have some evidence of his speed, which is when Oda answered which Straw Hats would win in a 50 meter race, and Usopp came in at sixth. But to be fair, three of the characters who beat him, Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji, are all epic superhumans. Chopper is a reindeer, and thus genetically built for speed, and Brook, the overall winner, is effectively a superhuman himself without all of the heavy muscles and such to hinder him. Which makes Usopp far and away the fastest regular member of the crew, and in the series, he has demonstrated a consistent ability to outrun opponents who should theoretically be superior to him in every way. Like Chu, who was a fishman, and even on land, should have had a significant speed advantage over humans. However, to compete with that, I should mention that Buggy has something of a unique speed advantage in regards to levitating his body parts. 
but it all centers around his feet, which will most certainly move a lot faster without the rest of his body weighing them down. So while I do believe that Usopp would be faster than Buggy in general, with his Devil Fruit activated, I think the Buggy could achieve a speed equal to, if not clearly surpassing that of Usopp. However, unlike Buggy's feet, I have no solid grounding to declare a winner here, because once again, both of these figures really fit into the comedic realm, and they can honestly be as fast as a joke demands them to be. So in terms of speed, I'm going to call this a tie. Next up, we will be talking about power, another one of those uh, not so great areas for either Buggy or Usopp, but surprisingly, not as bad as you may initially think, for, uh, for Buggy anyway. Usopp does admittedly have a bit of a rough time here, and we do have some pre time skip evidence to support this, which is that Usopp quite blatantly admitted to Nami that he could only lift five kilos at most, which is just over 11 pounds for our American friends. So if the question ever comes up regarding whether or not Usopp does lift, the answer was no. But this is obviously no longer true in the post time skip realm because Usopp has worked and worked, becoming significantly more buff, or buff in general, I guess. But the weird thing is though, is that Oda has stated in One Piece Treasure that he always intends Usopp to be the weakest member of the crew. And if you were to take that statement at face value, then you could take that to mean, well, is Nami physically stronger than him then? But I don't believe that Oda was referring purely to physical strength and it takes things into account like the destructive power of the climate act and all of that sort of business. However, when we move to Buggy, we do see an undeniable gap in power, because not only can this clown lift more than five kilos pre time skip, he was also capable of lifting entire humans with a single hand. Now, to be fair, this is a side effect of his devil fruit, which seems to allow his levitating body parts to carry things of incredible mass, like a whole whale shark fishman, for example, and under very high pressure as well, being chased by a magma boy. So while it may not necessarily be fair to attribute this to strength, as it is more of a side effect than anything, it is still greatly relevant because Buggy can lift and maneuver objects on a superhuman scale. And that is very, very clearly going going to give him a supreme advantage in the category of power. Let's do another quick category now, but one we do have to address, which is Haki. Now of our contestants here, only one of them is a confirmed Haki user, and that would be Usopp, who awakened his observation Haki during the events of Dress Rosa. Now the degree to which this will be an advantage is unknown, because at the time of this recording, we are unsure if Usopp can actually voluntarily invoke it. However, at the same time, that's more than we know of Buggy, who currently has access to, let's count, uh, zero types of Haki, which is a bit sad, but in all seriousness, even if he did have them, look, it's highly unlikely that he would apply either observation or or armament to any sort of decent degree. So even if this is a very unbalanced category, Usopp's ability to maybe sometimes invoke observation Haki is an easy win for this section. Now for our fighting style category, and it's important to note that both of our jovial gladiators make heavy use of weaponry. In Buggy's case, said implements are generally explosives in the form of muggy balls, which he has produced on various scales with incredible destructive power. Like seriously, as much as these things get used as a joke, they are very, very powerful. And as for Usopp, he possesses an incredible array of gadgets, but what I'm going to focus most on are the pop greens, which are arguably both his most powerful and versatile implements, capable of providing him with an out in almost any scenario, and which can perform tasks ranging from producing off-putting smells to crafting powerful plants capable of disabling opponents, or at the very least restricting their maneuverability, as well as the general explosive fun stuff. The main problem here though, is that Buggy tends to be more of a ranged fighter, firing his weapons and then hoping that they will dispatch his enemy for him. That is a problem, it's a problem in general in One Piece actually, but it's an even bigger problem when facing off against Usopp, who is not only a long range fighter, but a clearly superior long range combatant. So in theory, Usopp could shoot down anything that Buggy could send his way and then go on to target the clown himself. Buggy's weaponry becomes completely ineffective, which would force him to invoke his fruit powers, but then things just become a casual shooting gallery for Usopp. And as long as he can fire fast enough, Buggy is kind of in a state of being hard countered by pure style here. So that's another tick for Usopp. Nearing the end times now, and intelligence is a very interesting one because we are dealing with two very crafty individuals who for the most part have had no choice but to hone their minds in the face of overwhelming raw power in this world. But as such, both Buggy and Usopp are excellent tacticians and manipulators of circumstance as shown by Buggy being able to play combative chess by laying traps with various parts of his body. And we've seen the same from Usopp who was able to come up with a strategy for someone as physically weak as himself to effectively fight Luffy during the Water 7 arc. I would say that Buggy's greatest mental strength is that of his wit though, and his ability to think quickly on his feet to turn potential enemies into strong allies. It's very Luffy-like in that regard, actually. So Buggy preys more on the psychology of his opponents, whereas Usopp is more the type to zero in on an enemy and cater the situation to put himself in the best possible position to strike. But at the same time, Buggy is clearly capable of those tactics as well, just as Usopp is capable of using psychology. And so we end up with a sort of mirror matchup of intelligence happening. Both of their skills are catered to dealing with those more powerful than them. So deciphering an outcome of what would happen with someone of a similar level to themselves is not so easy. It would become a bizarrely cerebral chess match, one where I can't see a clear winner. And so this category is going to be another one where I need to award a tie. 
Now for miscellaneous stuff, one thing I do need to note before our conclusion is that Buggy is very, very lucky. His luck is much more unfortunate than someone like Luffy, but the winds of fate always seem to blow in the favor of Buggy, which has naturally made it so that he can fail upwards. And Usopp does have a similar level of luck as well, which was prominently displayed during Dressrosa with the whole God Usopp business, but it's not anywhere near that of the level of Buggy. So if it did ultimately come down to a tie, then that is how I would award this match to be in Buggy's favor. However, that won't be necessary this time around because yes, we do have a close but clear victory in the form of Usopp, who has scored a mighty five points, outright winning in terms of durability, hockey, and fighting style, as well as tying on intelligence and speed. In comparison, Buggy put up an incredibly hard fought battle, taking away Devil Fruit and Strength, as well as forcing Usopp into a draw scenario for speed and intelligence for a grand total of four mighty, but not quite enough V points. So once again, it certainly was close, but congratulations must go to the Straw Hat Sniper for pulling off a fantastic victory here today and moving one step closer towards his dream of becoming a brave warrior of the sea. But what do you guys think? If you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do feel free to check out these ones rather conveniently on the right of your screen. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece content. And of course, please do comment with who you would like to see jump into the arena for another One Piece battle. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.